Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at depth sorting. So here we have an example. And as we drag this closer, it comes up on top. But if it's far back, it goes behind. Ooh, isn't that neat? Okay, let's take a look at some code and see how we did that. Uh, let's see, we'll go to Adam now, so we'll reduce this down. There's Adam, almost. Uh. <laughs> Get down there. And this is uh, in the Explore folder. So um, we're running Zim01, Zim version Zim01. Although I think this would work back through any versions of Zim, or most versions of Zim, uh, aside from our new template here. So here we're calling our frame. When we're ready, we call ready. Uh, we've got a label in there. Uh, we want to put some things on the stage that are um, sort of look like they're in 3D or they're getting smaller. So let's have a look. This is an open browser plus here. So these are smaller in the back. So we're just going to tile. Uh, looks like a five, five by five, five by five tile. We'll make the first row of the tile small, second row bigger, etc. We're just trying to, you know, get some stuff on the screen that looks like it has a depth to it. You might want to place certain parts of you know, per certain things in there and make things in the background smaller. Um, what we're sorting on is the height. So the y height, and we're also sorting it based on the registration point in the middle. In the middle, sometimes you might want to make it at the bottom. So make the registration point at the bottom of all of your items. If you were going to do that, then when we tile the new circle, you would say dot reg. Um, probably the center there, and then bottom. So that puts the registration point on the bottom of the circles. And then when we have our icon here, our rect as well, um, we can, well, that's going to center the reg. Uh, so dot reg, center, bottom, like that. And just dot center it on there, so don't adjust the reg. Let's just see if that works. So now the height will be based on the registration point at the bottom, so as soon as the bottom of this goes past the bottom of that, it'll pop up on top. Boop. Like that. Boop. That actually might be a bit better, huh? So before... Like that. So before, if I undo this... It was based on the registration point in the center. Let's have a look now. So now, as soon as the center of the icon goes past the center of the circle, it pops up. Boop. Pretty close to the same thing, though, isn't it? Because the icon's about the same size as the center. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Anyway, so um, it's up to you. We'll just leave it this way, then. So uh, we're wanting to tile these things, and this isn't really to do with the depth sorting, but it's interesting anyway. Um, with the Zim series, we can specify a series of radiuses, radii, for the circles. 10, 30, 50, 70, 90, but we don't want that series to kick in uh, every time. So if we go like this. That's that's how that would look. It would be it would be going 10 and then 30 and then 50 and then 70 then 90, and now um, it keeps on repeating and it, the last one there is bigger. So that's kind of the wrong way. So what we're doing is saying just toggle these every five. So do five tens, do five thirties, do five fifties, do five seventies, and that's kind of neat, isn't it? Uh, let me just show you in the doc under series. 
So here's the series, and you can do a lot of things with the series with the methods afterwards. So step defaults to one. So in other words, you can make a set a step go up um, by two or three or whatever. Every jump. So jump to an index, but don't run it. Uh, and the next one will go from there. So you can sort of at any time skip to a certain series. You can reverse it. So that'll go in reverse direction. You can bounce it. So it'll go forward, then backwards, forward, then backwards. Flip it. So do it backwards. Uh, constrain between things. Uh, randomize. So that, uh, oh, there's a way that you can randomize it, go through the series. And then when the next time you go through the series, it, um, ah, yeah, so that's the difference here. Randomize is order, order the series each time it finishes. So you're going to ran, go randomly through a series, and then it will do that. Randomize the order of the series, but duplicates on end. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, so the, ran, this random is pretty cool because you can go through the series and each time it will be in a random order. Uh, will that be the same as just randomizing picking? No, no, because if you randomize just uh, with an array, for instance, it it might duplicate the picking, whereas this one isn't duplicating the picking. It's just randomizing in order and then following that order. Um, mixing's close, but we found that when you, say, uh, loop each one sometimes you're gonna if, if you just have random you're going to have the ends might be the same for instance because it's going to call that random again and it maybe the first one will be the same as the last last one's last one <laughs> all right but um mix avoids that so it won't have the same one the only problem is is if you have a complete um say do it again it might be that or uh, I don't know, or kind of like, say going around a big circle or something like that is possible. The very last one could be different than the very first one a long time ago. Anyway, that's no big deal. And shuffle shuffles the order of the series, but then we'll repeat the same order. Ah, so that's that's different as well. So shuffle r repeat uh, uh, shuffles, but then we'll repeat that shuffled order. So that's different than random. So those are pretty cool things. Um, for the series, Makes it even more powerful. And what else are we doing here? So the tile uh, we're now making at the size, and so that will uh, do the size right. Yeah. Save it up. Our little blue dot was showing. Save it up, and now it does the size right. We're randomly picking from different colors. <laughs> that random last one, they're all blues. Um, and then once we do that, the, the tiled elements are all inside of a tile container. So if we've got this thing on the stage, if we didn't put all of that stuff onto the stage like this, I'll show you what's going to happen. There it is, and it, it just doesn't seem... Oh, it did it right, right after the height of this was higher than the height of the whole tile, I guess, or something like that. But anyway... Um, it doesn't seem to work because all of these things are inside of a tile and this is outside the tile on the stage so we're only we're only doing depth sorting between the whole tile and and this thing right here oh yeah tiles registration points top left corner because we didn't send a regit so as soon as the registration point of this goes higher than the tiles registration point boop it, it goes to the back but now it's always at the front so what we had to do was loop through the tile. Uh, we, we could have done this without a tile. And if you were manually placing things on the stage, it'd probably be all on the stage. Or indeed, you could put everything in some sort of scene container or something like that, including the object that you're moving. And then just do the, the depth sorting that I'm going to show you on that scene container rather than on the stage. Right now, we're... Uh, doing it on the say sort children on the stage we would just sort children on whatever container all that stuff's in but um, for now anyway we're just making it on the stage that's interesting because then I bet you that if I go higher 
Right now I'm on top of that text. If I go higher than the registration point of the text, which I guess we can't see, it's top left corner. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I just, <laughs> just saw the little top of the D go on top of the, the Zim thing. Uh, anyway, that it was, see, now we're including this in the depth sorting and we and may have had other tools or interface around the side that we don't want included in the depth sorting. And so, um, in that case, you would want to make sure that you put all your objects and your object that you're moving inside of a single container and then do the depth sorting on that container. Right now, we're using the stage. So, how do we put everything on the stage? We uh, loop through the tile. So, tile.loop each time we're given the, the element of the tile. And then we're just adding that to the stage. Uh, Zim, by default now, as of, I don't know, Zim 9 or something like that, Zim oct. Uh, anytime we add two, it will um, keep the X and Y because this tile, it's X and Y is here, zero, zero. And so if we, if we pick something up from the tile and put it on the stage, it could, it should, it would, it would have um, been in a slightly different place because the X zero, zero in the tiles here where zero, zero on the stage is up at the top. So everything, if you put it on the stage, would just appear to shift up and to the, to the left. Well, in Zim, uh, we adjusted that to prevent that from happening. So we do a local to global or a lo where, you know, where, wherever you're putting this thing with the add to. In the case of the stage, it would just be the same as a local to global. But anyway, it's really just a local to local to solve that uh, issue. You don't have to, so in the add to, there's a parameter where you can turn that off. Like it's, let's have a look and see what that parameter is called, because this is an explorer. So add to, and that means we just kind of look at everything, where whatever we happen to be looking at, we, we dig into it a touch. So there's the local to local uh, parameter right there. And if we have a read about it, local to local default true makes object not move when added from one coordinate space to another. This may also change the object's X and Y property, set to false to not do this. Uh, local to local is ignored if the current doesn't have a parent to it. Okay, so it's not in a uh, container yet, then it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for that. All right, so we've added it to the stage, and what's the comma true about? Like, this, this would be tricky, but if you don't have that comma true, then you get the following. Uh, error cannot read property add to of undefined and you're scratching your head going uh, on 24 cannot read property add to of undefined why would the tile be undefined we just loop through the tiles um, the answer is if we are adding the tile from tile or adding the t here each individual tile if we're adding it from the the big tile to the stage that's actually removing it from the tile container and if you're looping forwards that removing it messes up the index numbers uh, it's the same when looping through an array and removing things from the array uh, if you're um, changing the length and if you're using for i blah 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 um, might still work with for i equals something something to the length of the array if the if you're constantly using the length of the array that might solve that problem but if you stored the length of the array earlier and looped through it then it would break and so that's kind of what's happening here anyway anytime you remove something from a container loop backwards and so that's what this is right here comma true it's one of uh, one of the tricky sort of glitch thingies but loop backwards when you're removing from a, tainer, a container. If you're hitting a bunch of monsters and anytime you hit a monster, you remove it from the monster container and you're looping through that container to see if you're hitting the monsters, then loop backwards. Okay, so if we loop backwards, it then works and we don't have our problem. All uh, right, so that was just getting some things on the stage there. Note that if we didn't do our style, here we didn't talk about our style, but if we didn't do our style, then we would have gotten this, where uh, looks like, I guess that's the edge of the thing, so it's left aligned. And we can't really tell as we go across, but we got a left line by default. Here's what a right align would look like. Align right. 
And they all go off to the right here. And that doesn't look the best either. So we want an aligned center. Now we've used style just so that we don't have to go into our tile. So this is operating on the tile. The align is something like, I don't know, the 12th parameter or something. So we'd have to go null, 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 null to get through a bunch of other stuff. So we didn't bother going to the Zim Duo technique either because we've got a fair number of these that we would have to map out, like the OBJ, the calls, the rows, the spacing H, or spacing W, spacing H. And then we could have gone to the align in using the squiggly brackets, uh, or we could just pop in a style there. We've got the vertical line center. I don't think the vertical line center is doing anything because all of the vertical lines are, uh, all of these things are um, the same height. So that probably will still work. May as well take that out then. Okay, but if these happen to be different heights, we probably would have wanted them aligned in the center. Um, doge, 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 do. All right, so that's all this stuff. Then we're making our icon. We start off by making a rectangle. And then we thought, hey, let's make it the Zim icon. That's a little bit more Zim-like and fun. Okay, so we did a rectangle, but that could be whatever your character is. It could be an animated sprite. Uh, it could be a label. I'm not sure what you're going to be using, but this will work with all that. We've made this one to drag. And when we drag, we do the on top false. Otherwise, this happens over here. And we refresh. There it is. It's been positioned right. We'll see how we positioned it right. But as soon as I pick it up, it comes to the top. And then I start to drag it. And then the, the positioning uh, pops in, or the, the layering pops in. So ready? I'll just do that one more time. I pick it up. It comes to the top. And then as soon as I start dragging, it, it, it's good. But obviously, that spoils the effect. So we said, don't bother coming up on top. Let let our depth sorting handle it. So now I've picked it up and it's still in behind there. And when I drag, it comes up so much better. Here's our depth sorting now, just down here, this kind of stuff. So let's see. Um, we're doing two things as we're dragging. We're changing the depth, but we're also making the zim bigger or smaller. So if we didn't make the zim bigger or smaller, uh, that would come under the scaling here and it would end up looking like this. So there's the Zim logo at its normal size. As I come closer, it j it's just not scaling anymore. And obviously that's probably not what we want either. We want a bit of 3D feel to whatever we're moving here. Okay, so in when we animate along a path, we added this thing called... Um, level I think it was and it would automatically do this as it's animating along a path. This is Zim Explorer so we'll go take a look at that right now. We mentioned it. So in Zim under examples under the collections under Neo. So this was all back in Zim 9 right here. So here's Zim Neo. One of the things in Zim Neo was this extra which shows animating along a path. So there's the path that's user editable. And when it goes up higher, it goes darker and smaller. So here it is. Uh, going, there it goes smaller, it goes darker, and it also goes slower. The farther away it goes slower and slower back here, but then fast as it gets closer. And that just makes it seem like natural. We're also depth shifting. So see that depth shift that's happening as it goes through that cloud that's there? That's all built into animating along a path and dragging along a path as well. Well, uh, some of it anyway, not the speed. I guess that would be up to you how fast you want to drag it along a path. So isn't that cool? And once again, this is a user editable path. So I could pick this up and bring it down closer. And then there it is going fast at the beginning. And then put this over here. Let's wait till it goes past again. Isn't that amazing? Uh, and by the way, this path is straight. We've made it straight, but it doesn't have to be straight. So here, here we are. Um, we're going to apply a curvy path now. Oh. Wee! 
<laughs> All right, Zim's amazing. So that was built in the depth shifting and the getting smaller. So basically what we're wanting to do is just make it get smaller as it approaches the top and make it get bigger as it approaches the bottom. For that, we can set up a proportion that just makes it easier. We don't have to think about it. Although proportion equations quite easy when you've got uh, zero and a max there, like a height or whatever, it would have been quite easy. But still, I, I, I just I just like using a proportion it makes it easy to think about. So this is a base min, a base max. So that what that means is based on based on um, from zero up here to the height, this is the min is zero to the height, I'm wanting to set a target that will relate to that. So I want the scale to be 0.1 when it's at zero, 0.1 scale, and I want the scale to be twice as big when it's at the bottom. I just kind of eyeballed those numbers. Uh, there's probably a way that we could have set that up perfectly, but I didn't bother. All right, so point, point 0.1 way up at the top. Um, it's gonna be related to how you wanted these numbers. So probably we should have just set up the proportion and made each of these numbers based on the proportion, like had the same size circle, scaled it based on the proportion that we set up in here. And then we could have had everything matching perfectly. Oh uh, yeah, that's actually not a, not a bad idea. Um, I just started off by eyeballing this and Did it even work? I don't I don't think that worked exactly anyway, because that's just going up by 20 each time. It would really you'd want it to be multiplying by rather than um going to I think going from the smallest to the next one. That the line from here to here should continue to pass through each of the edges, and I believe that it no longer does. It's kind of like going like that basically, and these ones are not growing big enough. Same with any of these two. We could go through these two and it should pass through that edge, although that looks pretty good. Maybe that's the wrong way. Maybe it's now too small and it's passing that way. Anyway, um, I don't think those are in a straight line. <laughs> it could be wrong. It doesn't look like they are to me. Whereas perspective would say that they, they should be in a, in a straight line. So uh, maybe if we started at zero, and added 10 each time with that yeah, we, we started at zero but starting at 10 I don't know does that make a difference I'm not sure um, so we've we've eyeballed it in here and what the proportion gives us is that we can scale so here we are scaling our rect oh wasn't that logo no just called it rect uh, may as well call that icon and that would be icon here. Do you see it anywhere else? I don't think so. Just run it to make sure. Well, something happened there. Yeah. Uh, convert rect icon. Okay, there we go. All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's supposed to come up above now. So I think we icon scale proportion. Icon dot drag on top false. Let's do a search for rect. Uh, icon. So there we go. And yeah, there we go. Working. Working. Oh, there's a rect there too. Icon. So we'll we'll go over this comment that I would code, but that was another another icon. All right, so we made an icon. It's currently center regged, and we're dragging it on top false. I moved it over slightly just because um, otherwise it went right behind this middle one. And so I just tucked it over so we could see it better. Might have been best to just do four wide. I wonder, let's try that. Let's not bother moving it over. And we'll just make this go four wide. That means it's going to go every four here. And there's our tile. And make it four, and we get the wrong one, four. Four in the calls, five. <laughs> kind of messed it up there. And there's where our, our center align 
would have been better. So you see how, how that's messed up if we had uh, kept our align or V aligned center up here. Then these two, instead of being top aligned on there, would have center aligned, but I guess we should be fine. So now we've got, we don't have to shift that over. It fits on here a little bit better. And we've still got enough to give the example. Yeah, okay. I like that better. And Zim Explorer, welcome to Zim Explorer and Fix Up. <laughs> Zim Explorer and Make Better. All right, coming on down. So that was, like I said, kind of hand coded or figured out with these guys. But what the proportion is doing is we can now scale based on the proportion. We convert. So proportions got to convert. This proportion object has a convert method. It's the only one we really use. Oh, or immediate. There's also immediate. But anyway, uh, we're scaling. No, there is no immediate. It, proportion damp has an immediate. Proportion damp will do this, but adds damping as well. And sometimes you want to start a place. Excuse me. Sometimes you want to start at a place and don't want to damp to it, so you can use an immediate method. But anyway, it converts the only one really we use here for the proportion. And we're passing in the icons Y. Um, initially, I went frame oh, F dot mouse Y. So I was doing it based on the mouse Y, which uh, sucks at the moment. <laughs> And I'm not dragging it. So, so the only time this is calculating is when I drag. But when I did the do depth at the beginning, the mouse Y was way up here. So that's what it gets. But if I pick this up and drag it, then it will kick in. Um, so anyway, that's one thing wrong. The other thing wrong is when we go to the motion controller, motion controller has damping. Uh, let me just show you this quickly. Um, so here we are based on the 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 uh the mouse move now but you can see that the damping is is affecting it so if i go quickly to that it gets big really quickly if i go back to here my mouse was small before it got there and so it's changing size as i move around it's kind of like this whoa 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 effect and it's kind of like well wait a minute what's it doing oh i see it's um changing its size based on the current mouse position but the object's not at the mouse position yet so I scratched my head and said, oh, okay, that's silly. We just need to convert it based on the icons.y position. Okay, and then our this works nice and fine. So it's just depending on the height. And as, it, as it's moving itself, it, it knows its height. It has nothing to do with the mouse position, really. So those are independent. Anyway, we'll come back to uh, that bit right here. We haven't, we haven't really seen the press move yet and stuff, so we want to finish that off. So by going to the icons Y, that's great. That's one thing that our do depth is doing. The other thing is it's sorting the children. So this is a create.js method for containers. And uh, our container in this case is the stage. And we're sorting the children based on this depth equation. So that tells us what equation to do our sorting on. And basically, it will receive, as it goes through the children, it has an object one and an object two that will um, allow us to compare objects in there. We're basically saying if the, this is much like sorting in JavaScript, if you're sorting by how big a number is, you've got to do something like this. So we're quite used to this. Uh, if you've never seen it before, then it's a little bit of a mind twist. But uh, if you've coded in JavaScript and need to sort <laughs> an array of numbers by how big they are, then you have to do something like this, because otherwise it will sort those numbers alphabetically. And uh, 10 will come before 2, because it starts with 1. Um, Okay, so anyways, basically saying if the y of object 1 is bigger than the y of object 2, then return 1, and that sort of is positive, like pushing it up towards the end. Whereas if the y is less than the object 2's y, then return minus 1, and it will go down in a sense. And then if they're equal, don't bother with anything. Uh, probably, actually, I think you do need something there. That's 
I think that makes a subtle bug where it's not working properly if you don't actually return what happens when it's zero. I just thought you could return null, but I think, or just not return anything, but I think you gotta actually put a return in there. Anyway, just do it this way. Uh, this is in the create jest docs uh, right there. Um, and so down below here, that's how we're sorting the depth. And that includes this child right here includes this child because this is also on the stage and so that's what's happening there we do a depth sort right away if we didn't do a depth sort right away because we made this last this is what happens it comes up on top so you see what i mean we made all the tile things we added them to the stage we made this last so it's on top because we haven't done the depth sorting so what would happen then is that as soon as i pick it up boop and and start to drag it moves it underneath so that's that's not good either is it so we have to do our depth sort we may as well i mean we could <laughs> we could manually figure it out but why why bother manually figuring it out we just did a, a sort here so let's do it so we do our depth sort right away but we also do our depth sort as we're pressing down and moving on the object so that create just gives us a, a press move we could have uh, done the depth sort all the time like that and just not bother doing it there. So, um, and if we do it all the time, we don't need to do it here either. So that's basically a ticker that's doing that all the time. And then I pick that up and it's working just fine. But it's also calculating, the ticker is calculating that depth sort right now. And we're not even dragging anything. So there's no point for it to be uh, doing that right now. So uh, instead we, call a, a do depth only when we're press moving. The only thing we have to watch out for there is that um, we need to do it right away as well. Okay. So now it's only depth sorting when we press move. It's not doing any calculations when we're not press moving. This other one though, go to the second one here. hope you're Fine, still with us on this Zim Explore. I'm feeling a little mellow, so my apologies. I think it's my nap time. <laughs> about, to, about to go for a nap. But uh, we did this. Um, a fellow from the forums wanted to know how to do this depth sorting thing, so we thought we would build a little example. And uh, when we did, it was like, oh, this is a pretty cool example. Let's do a Zim Explore on it. But like I said, it's my nap time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, I'm going to fall asleep pretty soon. You probably are too if I keep on talking about napping. Uh, anyway, the second one is with a motion controller, and we're using the mouse move, but it could be anything. Uh, here, here's what the mouse move looks like. So um, as soon as I move my mouse, it heads towards it. And as you can see, it's making its way through the crowd, <laughs> so to speak. And arriving. How about uh, if we don't have anything there? This is it's a different one. There it is in there. Then it's a mouse press. So if I press, it heads on back. But watch this. Watch it go through the stuff. Neat, huh? So even on press, it's it's depth sorting. And the reason why is because we're constantly depth sorting. So did we need a constant depth depth sorting <laughs> depth sorting <laughs> for? for uh, the mouse move? I think the answer is yes. I mean, if I just hold my mouse still, then no, we don't need it anymore. It's stopped. And there is actually a way to capture an event in the motion controller saying I've stopped moving. And we could have removed the ticker at that time. And then as soon as I start moving again, we could have added the ticker back. There might even be an event called moving one, or, you know, that we could have, the, the, the event would have just as it's moving, call event, 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 event. Uh, let's see if it's got one. If it does have one for the moving, nah, so that's, that's tricky because it's the damping that's the issue. So the moving might be like the mouse move here, but if even if I stop moving my mouse, you see because of the damping, it's still continuing to move. So let's have a look at the docs and see if we can discover anything there. So that's um, under the motion controller motion controller right here uh, sometimes when there's 
events like that and you don't always use them, we have we make you turn on the events. But I don't see anything here that says events. Usually we call it events and you'd have to set that to true. Like an animate, for instance. We've got an animate event. I have to set that to true. Scroll on down to the events then at the bottom right here. Dispatches a change event when it changes in direction. Dispatches a mouse down, dispressing, pressing, dispatches a moving event if the target is moving and a start moving and stop moving events and start moving and stop moving events. That looks good. So that would probably actually be a better, a better thing to do. So rather than the ticker running all the time, if I'm not even there and it's not, it's not moving anymore, if it finishes moving, we don't really want to calculate. So let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, where is that event though? Let's have a look. Mm, I've got two docs up. Well, it says that it, it dispatches. So I think this is in the motion controller itself. Sometimes when we've got a controller like that, we would put the event on uh, the object. But here, the motion controller extends an event dispatcher specifically so it can tell you all those events itself. So it doesn't put it on the object. But so that means we go something like this, const mc for motion controller or whatever. And then we would say, I'll comment that out. We would say mc.on moving. Was that it or was it on motion? on moving. Mm, we would call do depth. Do depth. And then as long as this isn't just a mouse move, which I, it wouldn't be, then this should work just fine. Same way. Yeah. That's great. And what it means is if it's not moving, like right now it's not moving, then we're not calculating. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Woohoo! Uh, Zim Explore and fix. Zim Explore and make better. <laughs> that's what we're on. So, uh, sure, I guess we'll just get rid of that then. And comment out these two. Boop, like that. And bring it back to our press move. There's other types of uh, movement like keyboard movement and stuff like that. So let's just verify that that works on keyboard movement. Might as well. We put it here, such as key down. Okay. Uh, for key down to work, by the way, if I refresh here and I key down, it doesn't work. We got to click on the stage or somewhere in there before key down can work. All right, look at that. So that's good. Um, one thing that key down is doing, I don't know if you can tell, is it, as I move across, that's how long it seems to be taking. If I go up and I move across, it looks like it's way faster. You see that? Because I'm not changing the speed of it based on the depth. So here it looks like that's, okay, say that's the right speed. Da, 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 da. It's actually the same speed, but optically it seems like it's going way faster in the background. So what we should do is change the motion controller's speed based on the Y right in here. So the do depth should now also change the motion controller's speed, MC, which if we call the function do depth right here, and MC won't be built until down here, so we need to move this. To here. It's all right having the event, like having icon.onPress do depth there, because that happens only when we press move, and by that time it already knows do depth. But um, if we go do depth, we have to have our motion controller built before we access motion controller here. So motion controller dot speed is equal to, uh, now we need to do one of these proportion things specifically for speed. So we'll go copy. Uh, 
darn uh, the speed's not going to be we're not going to be using the speed when we do our press moving oh well let's carry on and just see what this looks like cuts to proportion speed is equal to so we'll base it on the height but we'll go from a speed of when it's up here we want a slower speed so that's like say one when it's down here we want a faster speed so maybe 10 times i think that the speed is going to be proportional to the size difference and if we take a look at the size difference it's roughly 10 to 9 or 9 times bigger sort of thing so that's kind of what we did here too i think or maybe not anyway and kind of what we're doing here um all right so that's the proportion speed and then we say proportion speed dot convert and this is going to be again based on the icon y so note that those values are different here and here. That's why we've got two different ones. Oh, possibly we could have just multiplied it. Nah. Where? It said icon scale times 10 is the speed, and that might have given us a value, but this is a little bit more. Okay, so what are we doing? Keys. So now when I'm up here, look, now it's taking me longer to go across here. Da 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 da. And if I come forward, it's it's still faster up here and slower the farther away it is. So um, that, that looks pretty cool. I like that. Huh? Um, our perspective's a bit off here, by the way. These things should be shifted into the middle. And then if these things were shifted into the middle, the time it takes to go from here across to the other one it would be the same time as it goes from here across to this one but uh we we don't have our perspective quite right <laughs> which hey, who knows maybe it happens but obviously these balls are farther away than these balls <laughs> um, so i don't know uh, to fix that we would have to uh probably uh, i don't know we could draw it using some sort of perspective thing in the first place but tiling isn't all that great we have no perspective so otherwise we if we did have a perspective we could take that tile and perspective it we have skew and skew makes it all go to one side or the other side but it doesn't pinch it in the middle so the only choice would be to um, sort of more programmatically build something this far away as if it's smaller this far away when if it's a bit bigger and, and and get bigger and bigger and then this far away so you'd end up with this uh, kind of like a funnel or whatever you want to call that, a perspective drawing. We could sit here and just manually kind of move these with with um, MOV, but that would be a bit of a pain probably. <laughs> right? So it would be best probably just to build them right from scratch. So we didn't bother. All we're trying to do here is show that it has... Um, our layers go through so if you want to consider it a perspective drawing just get rid of all these ones only have one row of these or one sorry one column and then we would have proper perspective well we don't even have as mentioned before we don't even have proper perspective but uh whatever so that's the speed issue okay dealt with and how are we going to um recover this now though mm. Uh, I think we're done. We've looked through the code, but we made it a bit more complicated than it was before. So that's with the motion controller key down, changing the speed. Does that work with a mouse move? Let's have a look. I think it will. So now when I mouse move on here, it's taking longer to get across. And when I'm here, I'm closer, so the speed is is easier. Ah, oh, that's just that's so nice, isn't it? Speed slower the higher up you get, and speed is faster the closer you are. Okay, so that works there too, which means it's kind of nice to keep that in for sure. 
Um, but if we just had our press move example here, are we, are we going to get an error then? Comment this out. What will happen with our press move? It's not working. So because the MC is not defined. Yeah, because we don't need the motion controller. So in other words, we could stick in an if MC maybe here. Oh, it's still not working. M okay. Uh, what? Because MC is not defined? No. Yeah. If um, type of MC is not equal undefined, <laughs> it's not worth it. Let's just comment out the M. Let's just comment out this one. If and they'll have to, you know, as you as you come to here, if you want to turn the MC on, then you can add in that. That's probably the best way to do it. Okay. All right. I know explorers are long, but um, I don't think we need to go on any longer. That was exciting, wasn't it? Did you like that? And let's change this title to depth sorting with zoom. All right. And we'll update that. Set depth sorting upload. There you go. I am Dr. Abstract. And uh, this has been a Zim Explorer. Uh, ooh, not that one. <laughs> this one. All right. This has been a Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. And you're welcome to come and join us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. Anytime you have any thoughts or questions, we'd love to hear about it. Mm -hmm. And good night. Uh, well, good nap. Good nap to you. Bye-bye. <laughs>